What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Rush Life Podcast, episode four. Episode number four. Yes. Apologies for not having the podcast recorded. Yes, I mean I'm last Sunday. Why though? Um, what happened? Yeah, I lost my voice. How? I still feel like I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, we went to Jamaica for a few days, linked up with some family and my sister and our kids, cousins and my nephew. And, and my friend too. And his friend too. Like, yeah, like family friends pretty yeah. much. Family and friends, family friends. Right, right. Um, and it was, was it the first day? I think it was the second day. I think it was the second day. Second day, I had a sip of a drink, choked, and when I cleared my throat, I had no voice. It was over. I was like this, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I feel like in that situation, you're obviously talking more than usual. You're with friends and family. You haven't I'm seen mixing them for a while. and mingling. Mixing and mingling. <laughs> on top of that, let's be honest, on top of that, like you were fighting a cold too. So it's a combination of like yeah. three things. The cold, talking a lot, and then the drink messed up your vocal cords. It was And a then that was it. That was it. Once that happened... Yeah. I was just like, oh my gosh, okay. I'm going to sleep this off and wake up the next day and be like good to go. Nope. Yeah. I still the, think we could have recorded because it would have been kind of funny and cute. What? People like would be that. like, we cannot make out a thing Keisha is saying. You guys should have just rested. I know 50%, even more than that, would have been like, nah, you guys should have not forced this. You should have just let her get her voice back. I would have <laughs> translated. Let us know in the comments. Would y'all have watched or listened to our podcast with Keisha Having no voice sounding like this. Would y'all have watched it? Would or you have recorded a podcast sounding like that? Absolutely. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, y'all. Um, so we're gonna get into it. We have um we have definitely a very uh emotional subject, a very touchy subject. Um, you know, it's about our experiences being an interracial couple. And there's something in my eye. Gosh. I'm trying to avoid it and, and not acknowledge it, but like... Yesterday, Trey went to pump gas. Oh, that's what it is. That's the same eye. Yeah, You've been talking about know. it all day. I, Yesterday, I Trey went to pop, pump gas. Yeah. And so, what, something on our, on our car is broken, like the gas cap. If you have a car that has like a capless gas cap, then you'll know what we're talking it's about. It's got a flap. It's a flap. But do you, you don't touch it. You just no, put it in. No, that's what I'm saying. It's a flap. Like when you put the gasoline thing Pause. in... Huh? <laughs> Not pause. Oh my gosh. We talking pause. about you're like, when you put it in. Whoa. Get your mind out the gutter, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Um, when you so. put the nozzle in, it moves the flap. Anyways, that happened to break and we're waiting for the part to be replaced. So yeah. I have to like put my finger in. <laughs> pause. pause. I have to put my <laughs> finger in and um and like move it. And then I got a bunch of gas on my finger and then I touch my eye. When well, you tried home. to rinse it off. I tried to rinse it off. I thought it was off. On the drive home, I, I rubbed my eye, and my eye's been bothering me ever since. I got, like, gasoline in my eye. I hope I don't lose my vision. Um, so, anyways, okay. if I'm, like, you only touching need to my see eye me a lot, anyways. Wow. If I, so, <laughs> but if I lose one eye, that's not going to be a good thing. I'll that's still, not going to happen. Let's I'll put still love you one eye, Willie. Yeah, it's fine. I can see fine. <laughs> anyways, so if I'm, like, rubbing my eye a lot, y'all, that's what happened. Um, so, okay, let's get back on track. Okay, let's get, let's back, get back on, on track, track, you guys. So we have a, a subject today. Obviously, it's very evident to see that we are in an interracial relationship, an interracial marriage. Wait, are we? Are you? Yeah, we are. Yeah, continue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Um, and, you know, we've been together for a very long time. So needless to say, um, we can speak about our own experiences and what... Our relationship has been like um, with our dynamic. Yeah, exactly. And there's been, there's overall, like, okay, so we'll start like big picture and then we'll go in like details and talk about scenarios and situations. Mm. I, I got to say off the, off, what's up? I kind of want to facilitate this one because All I feel right. like we could break it down into different, Categories? you know what I mean? Yeah. No, we definitely can. All I was, and we can still do that. You can facilitate. That's cool. <laughs> All I was gonna say is that, like, I gotta, I gotta just say up front, overall, being in an interracial, interracial, interracial. relationship, is that what we're doing today? No. Being in an interracial relationship for me, overall, it hasn't been like a bad experience. And I don't mean like you and me. I mean like from the way people treat us. Overall, it hasn't been bad. Have we experienced crazy things? Absolutely. Terrible, like bad things. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get into it. Um, I, we got story times. We got uh, experiences from friends, family, strangers. Okay, so let's 
let's ask a few questions. Yeah. To just just to like break the ice a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna go first, and you can ask me questions too. We're gonna obviously. ask each other questions. Yes, like yes, right. yes, yeah, yes. We can do that. Because I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna first. I'm gonna read a. Actually, no, I'm gonna read a comment at some point in time in this podcast, mm-hmm. and we're gonna address it. All right. Okay. So first things first. Have you? Okay. Before me, have you dated outside your race? Yes. How many times? Mm. Man, I don't really want to count. Like, okay, been, how many times has it more been than, more than once? Okay, how many times has it been a black woman, or at the time a black girl? I don't know if they were a woman yet. I, I don't know. I see what you're doing right now. Though. No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> you setting me up you, right well, now. Okay, we you're met. Setting me up right no, now. no, no. You're we met, set me up. met when we were what 18. Yeah. Well, okay. What constitutes like dating? Like been to being together for more than like. A week, boyfriend, a I'm your girlfriend. You're my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. But when, like, I don't know. Why are you dancing around the question? You setting me up right now. You're How am I up. setting you up? You're asking I'll for like, okay, okay. And stuff. Let me keep it as as simple as possible. Yeah. How many times? Like, okay, just just a vague number. I'm not asking like your body count or nothing. Like, it's not that serious. That's what I felt like you were getting to. No. Which, if if that's what we're doing, we could do. If that, I but. if I wanted to ask that, I would have asked you that a long time ago. That's yeah. not really my interest. Right. Um, how many times? You're saying like a serious relationship. Like how many actual relationships? Just in general. Sometimes we have play play relationships and then maybe two months and you end up don't liking the Do person. Do those count? Because that'll dictate my answer. Yeah, because you were walking around with them and hugging them and kissing them maybe. Okay. So like actual relationships, I would say like interracial, maybe like four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I did two and they were both. Two before me. Yes. True. Elementary school. <laughs> Wow, we're going back to elementary. I'm just, I'm just giving you a Y'all timeline. Y'all were dating at elementary? You know, a little boyfriend-girlfriend. Yeah. You know, we all have a little <laughs> boyfriend-girlfriend. All right. Um, okay, cool. And yeah. were any of those, like, serious at any point in time? Because, like, I want to know, like, what your experiences were before I would say, we were dating. Right. I would say one, possibly two, but really one was serious. Okay, cool. Before you, yeah. And then, like, did you, like, meet her family? Like... You know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And like, what was that experience like? Like, did they, did they accept you? Like, what was that like? Mm. Nah, they didn't really like me. But I don't think, to be honest, though, I don't think it was because of the, you know, being a different race, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I think it was more so like how I was back then, maybe, or like. Oh, the, they the knew you aura. were a bad boy. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, you know. That plays a factor. <laughs> that, that plays, that a, plays factor. a huge factor. I, I didn't get vibes like it was because I was a different race. I, I got more so vibes like they didn't like me because they felt I was probably a bad influence. Yeah. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, cool. Yeah. What about you? What was, what was your experiences with your little elementary <laughs> boyfriends, um, interracial boyfriends? Um, honestly, it was a play play thing. Like back mm-hmm. then, again, no, no older than grade eight. I think I was like in grade six. Yeah. And... Every recess, we would play together. Uh, we would eat our lunch together, like like stupid stuff. It wasn't like nothing serious. Um, I knew his parents, but like the parents never knew that we were like dating, you know. Yeah. In elementary school, you're a little bit more sneaky. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, it, like the only time you meet my parents is if I think like we're getting kind of serious. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess all together three. So yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, all right, so that was your question. Yes. All right, so my question, I didn't, like, so I'm not prepared because I didn't know we were doing questions. I thought we were talking about our... Just for some context. We don't have to go too deep. All right, because yeah. I thought we were talking about like our relationship. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. But like there's um, history. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, you don't have to ask me a question. All right. Case, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about our relationship. Okay. That's, okay. That's what I want to so get So let's into. talk about the beginning. Yeah. We're not going to go into our whole how we met stuff. If you guys want to see that episode, it's going to be linked up here. Um, but yeah, let's get into our relationship. Mm-hmm. So, um, let, okay. Let's, so, okay, so let's do that. So let's get into like the first experience that we had where we were like, whoa, being an interracial couple is what created this situation. You feel me? Yeah. We don't have to. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So le- the first one that I remember 
Actually, you know what? Nah, we got to start with like when we when our families <laughs> met each other. You feel me? Because I know that's what everyone probably wants to hear at least first. Yes. Did our families have prejudice or any type of thoughts or anything towards our partner, towards you, towards me, based on us being interracial? I can honestly say 100% from my side, absolutely not. I didn't feel any prejudice from your family. I didn't feel any prejudice from my family. I felt like they were both... From at least from from that perspective, super supportive. I never felt any type of never Z- like zero zero zero. Yeah, and you met my mom like right off the bat. Right off the bat, your mom loved me from jump. Actually, <laughs> shout out to Annette. Um, your mom loved me from jump, and yes. you know she's a sweetheart. Yeah, and my mom, shout out Bonnie. She she loved you from jump. Yeah, our dads are both super chill. Like me and your dad, we didn't start off on the greatest foot or whatever. We didn't have the greatest start to our uh, relationship. But it wasn't because of that. It wasn't because of that. At all. Yeah. I, I, we'll talk about that one day, but... Yeah. You well, know, we're super cool now. Like, yeah, yeah, Gilbert's yeah. my guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. And my dad, Lloyd, is like... That's y- my, y'all and that's him my are like pops this. right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 100% right. There was no... There was no traction when it came to our parents meeting each other and meeting us. And, and that, that felt whatever good. Else. It did feel good. That felt good. good. Because, like, like yeah. okay, I'm going to be 100% honest. In the mm-hmm. back of my mind... Not any time I bring a guy to meet my mom, especially because at the time my parents were separated. So Mm -hmm. anytime I bring a guy to meet my mom, it's always nerve wracking. Like you never know, like, like, is she going to like him? Is she going to approve? It's you always have like that, that gut feeling like, oh, no, she might not. You know what I mean? (laughs) Um, But I almost felt a little bit more pressure because I never brought anyone that looked like you, to be honest. I felt the pressure Mm -hmm. was on me. I don't know why I felt that way, but it's always like a little nerve wracking bringing a man to your home to meet your mom and officially, you know, whatever. And she met you at the workplace. That's what I was about to say. But to bring you to the house now. But I think she already knew what it was though, because she's seen us like literally doing our thing at work. So she kind of already, I think in her mind, knew what it was. So I don't think it was a surprise to her. When When I showed up at your house, she was like, Hey, Cameron. Yeah, because like, yeah, she's like, yeah, yeah. she's like, I, I've been seeing you, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. It's always a little bit nerve-wracking to be like, okay, come to my house, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, to be honest, I think that's more of like a female thing because, I mean, obviously, we never had that role reversal because my parents didn't live in Toronto. But um, so we never got to experience, you know, me bringing you to, to my yes. house, um, to my parents' house. But... It's not something I would even think about. Like it's not. I, I think that's more of a female thing. Yeah. To probably. me, I would like, be like, yeah, we're going, to, we're going to the crib. Like, it's, I wouldn't think about it any more than that. You know what I mean? Okay. Good um, to know. Yeah. So, I, so that was really cool that there was no tension in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think we would have lasted as a couple regardless of that, but that definitely did make things easier. It's like, yo, we we rock with each other the long way but our family also accepts it yeah. that, that was definitely a good start for us do you think that it's because we were raised in canada no no i think it's how we were raised not where we were raised can't but that's too too faceted though it's not that simple mm. that's my first response do i feel like there is more acceptance where we grew up yes I personally don't think that was the reason for us specifically. I think it's because our our parents naturally had good values. Maybe the way they were brought up and they they weren't, you know what I'm saying? Like they didn't have the same upbringing we did and whatnot. Um, I think it comes from the parents. Yeah, there's outside influence, but like, yo, you can anywhere in the world, it's what your parents are teaching you. That's my that's my thought. 100% because especially in Toronto, it's very multicultural. So we're used to seeing other races, not just around where we live and where we go, but mm-hmm. we're used to seeing other races together, all kinds, not just black and white. We see Indian with Chinese and, you know, all kinds all of, of things happening. Everything so mixed together. It was very normal to see that. It's not as consistent, but... It's a daily thing. You know what I mean? So in terms of when we go places and see other people that are in interracial relationships, it looks like a regular thing. But I feel like Canada and the U.S. are two different playgrounds. Right. 100% because of the history, right? It's, It's true, but Canada do have some crazy history as well. It's not often talked about, but Canada has a very 
dark past when it comes to racism, slavery, yeah. all of that stuff. Canada is no innocent. They're not Can innocent no, either. No, not at all. No. Um, also, off topic, but on topic, I'm going to quickly address this because we talking about, uh, you know, where we met, talking about Toronto and all of that. For those of you that don't know, we, we were in Toronto for the first 15, no, 13 years of our relationship. Three years ago, we moved to Miami. So we now, we're kind of experiencing both. We've been in South Florida um, for three years now. So we're, we're kind of getting to see both. Just, just to FYI for, you, for those of you that don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really think it's the parents. But your, your surroundings obviously influence you as well. So if the parents are giving you a, even a little bit of hint of racism in your upbringing, and then your surrounding enforces that more, yeah, are, are, is there, are you going to be more likely to have hate in your heart and to be prejudiced? Yes. Of course. Right? But I, still, it's the parents that start that. If you, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah, because that's my thoughts. children, like anyone with kids or around kids, even if you don't have children and you're around children, you'll know that kids are like a sponge. Anything that you say or do yep. around them, they soak it up and they that's their way that they go about their life. Yep. You know what I mean? Like... For instance, we have we have three children. Our youngest is four. Mm -hmm. If we slip with an F-bomb or an S-bomb, she'll think of the perfect time to say it because she knows how it was used in context. Yeah. The same thing goes for racism. Someone can, you know, whoever's not supposed to say the N-word will say it, and then they'll think of a way to say, oh, hey, you, uh, right? Because they mm -hmm. know how they heard it, and they know what context to use it in. By the way, she wasn't talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nah. That's that's swearing? No, you said if someone accidentally drops the M. -bomb, no, no, no. I'm talking it. about. I'm just like, hold on. Don't insinuate that that's that they no. might hear that from me. I'm nah. talking about no. upbringings because All it's right. the same thing. Like I'm talking about kids being a sponge, right? Yeah. Nah, so I you're 100 percent you. right about your upbringing because the way you were raised and the way you see how your parents treat people and how they act and how they raise you to be, yeah. that's exactly, not exactly how you turn out to be because you have to make your own decisions, obviously, right? right? But the influence is there, right? And same thing goes for how I was raised, right? Yeah, facts, 100%. Um, that being said, so now we got to transition, I think, into when did we actually start to feel the other side? Like, you know, it wasn't all that. So, okay, also, I got to say, I don't think I felt anything for our whole families. Before we get into that, like, that we're talking about our immediate family. I don't think we ever felt any type of bad blood or prejudice or hate from either family and any family member racially motivated. None. None. No. So we're on the same page. But so, also, sorry, yeah. so, just so I could throw this in there, I do have some family members on my dad's side of the family that are in interracial relationships before we were. Mm -hmm. So my dad's side of the family has that mix and mingle. And also my grandmother is either Portuguese or, or something, or my great grandmother, someone in there is mixed. So I feel like my mm -hmm. dad's side of the family naturally, I don't know how it's still trickling down, but there, there, a there few was, of my cousins are in. Yeah, there was interracial. interracial relationships already within the family. History. Right, exactly. Yeah. All right, so now moving outside of the family, have we experienced some some negative experiences in the interracial couple? Absolutely. And I feel like we can get into some story times, um, but definitely, I mean, even starting with the small things, before we get into like specific story times, it's it's the small things. We definitely see it. You'll, you'll see um, either an all-white couple or an all-black couple giving you that look and you only know this look if you're in a relation interracial uh interracial <laughs> relationship it's a look like it's a look of disgust and, and there's no other reason than it them hating on that fact right and, or it's just they're staring for too long like yeah but i feel like there is a look i mean you can never read someone's mind but you can I, I feel like both of us are good at picking up on energy mm -hmm. for example i've seen like white people look at me with like disgust like why are you with her that's the vibe i'm getting yeah you told me that before and too. i've and i've also seen this and i know you probably experienced it, the opposite black people looking at you mm -hmm. like what are you doing with this white guy mm -hmm. and especially since we moved to florida yeah you feel it more in florida yeah like I in don't. the u.s i mean in, in canada not that much there were there's a few instances but yeah that's, yeah that's funny to me that not funny but that's interesting to me that you say that because i haven't felt that mm. i mean when we leave, when we leave like the, the major city here, like when we did some road trips, yeah. 
But the same thing happened when we left the major city in Toronto. Oh, yeah. When we go like a, an hour and a half out of the city and we're in like some... Redneck town. I'm sorry. Redneck town. I had yeah. to say it. I guess you could say that. But Yes. In Toronto, when we went outside, when we did a few That's one trips, of the story times right yeah, there. Yeah. It was like, I did not know. So... Because, like, you know, when you live in the city, when you're a city girl, city boy. <laughs> yeah. We never lived in the you don't, country. You don't, you, don't go, you don't go too far out of your familiar surroundings. So when we took some road trips, it was like, oh, okay. I, So tell me if you remember this day. I, I, I know what you know you're going to talk about. So we're like an hour and a half outside of Toronto. We're in this, I don't want to say the town because I don't want to, like, no, don't I don't want to disrespect it. people that live there because definitely not everyone that lives in any town is bad. It's not, it's not everyone. But we go to this this small country town about an hour and a half outside of Toronto and hour and a half an hour GTA yeah it was like I don't know hour and a half from let's say Mississauga yeah so so it's deep yeah where it's it's me you and my friend who is like big like me he's like six two six three like me big black guy um and and we go in to get some breakfast it's like 11 a.m we go in to get breakfast in this diner. It's like a local diner. It's definitely all locals in there. So crazy. Uh, Keisha and my friend were the only two black people, probably in the town, to be honest, but definitely the only two in the restaurant. Yeah. When we get into the restaurant, I swear, y'all, like stares of death. Like, at every, not just at them, at me too. They're looking at me like, you traitor. Like, what? Like, looking like death threats. It was like the worst experience. With their looks. Looking at them like, it was crazy. I swear on everything within five... Okay, hold on. Let me back up. The place was packed. Yeah. There was no yeah. tables. When we sat down, we got like the last table. The place was packed. No word of a lie. Within five minutes, the whole restaurant cleared out. Empty. Everyone left. I don't even know how and everyone paid their checks. On the way out too. I don't even know how everyone paid their checks so fast. Maybe the waiter just told them, y'all can leave. You know, like, Yo, I don't know. Thinking back, I wonder why we stayed there. Did we eat? I think we did eat, but we were all kind of in shock. We were also super young. It was one of our first times experiencing this. And we were just like, I think we left quick though. Yo, I think we got our like, food and probably took it to go. Why did we even eat there still? I, I kind of feel like knows? we left quick. I feel like we left. This is a long time ago. I think this God is we're like, still alive. <laughs> for, no, Who absolutely. Who knows what they could have did to our food? Oh my God. But no, for real. Like... That was like one of the first times where it was like, oh, damn, it's like that. Yeah. And then there was a second time. I wasn't there the second time, but you had another experience. Oh. It was like some extreme experiences that just happened to happen with him and his best friend. And Yeah, yeah a close friend at the time, not my best friend. Okay. Yeah, definitely not my best friend. <laughs> yeah, not even close. But anyways, <laughs> at the time, it was a good friend. Yeah. Sh should I talk about that one? Talking about the cop one? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, The cop one was crazy. I thought it was with the same... Yeah, same guy, but you said my best friend. That's not my best friend. At the t the, so we're, again, we're going back like 10 yeah, years Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask you who because I feel like it's so long ago that I'm confusing the story. You probably yeah. are because definitely was never my best friend. Okay. Um, but we're getting beside the point. <laughs> I, I was with a close friend at the time and his friend was... Vis so we're, we're in Toronto... His friend was visiting, so it was me, my my good close friend at the time, who the same uh you know same black guy, um and then he had a, a Mexican friend, so it was a white guy, a black guy, and a, and a Mexican guy, and we were super harmless y'all. We were not up to anything bad. We're driving. We had just picked up my friend's friend from the airport, mm. and we we're on the we're on the freeway, we're on the highway, and there was one car who was just like going. I swear, like two miles an hour they weren't moving and every car was just going around them but they were going in the shoulder to get around them because we're on the right side of the freeway yeah everyone like everyone was going around them we went around them and a cop pulled us over yeah i, I don't know why he pulled us over maybe he's i don't know so anyways he pulls us over now and we're telling him <clears> the <throat> same thing i just told you guys we're like this doesn't make sense we're, we're even being respectful we're like officer this just doesn't make sense Everyone's going around this person like, why are we getting ticketed right now? And it wasn't just a regular ticket. He tried to tell me it was stunt driving and I was going to jail. But were you driving? You were driving. I was driving. Okay. So he takes, he, so the officer is very aggressive. He's like, you're going to jail. Get out the car. So we're like, officer, chill. Like, we didn't do nothing. Like, mm -hmm. everyone is going around this car. He's like, no, it's stunt driving. You can't go on the shoulder. So he pulls me into the, the back. He cuffs me, put me in the back of his car. 
and I'm saying the same thing. I'm respectful. I'm getting a little bit agitated because I'm like, I'm actually going to jail right now, mm-hmm. but I'm still respectful. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Like, why are you, why are you putting me to jail? Like, he's like, it's because of the company you keep. Mm-hmm. It's because of who you're with. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, he's like, he's like, those are not your people screaming at me, mm-hmm. yelling at me. It was crazy. But instantly, I now know the one you're thinking of. There's two cop stories. Yes. So I now know the one you're talking about. Okay. Let me finish this one, though. <laughs> so this officer is absolutely, he's <clears throat> literally screaming in my face, telling me it's the company I keep while I'm going to jail. That is literally what he said. Yeah. Because at first, he wasn't telling me when I was with them. When I was by myself and I asked them, it's because of the company you keep. Mm-hmm. That's what he's telling me. So I thought quick. Though. I've always been a quick thinker. So here's what I say. After I realized this is a super dirty cop, super racist cop, I'm like, and so even though I, the cuffs were in the front and I had my phone, so I go, randomly, I'm like, officer, I have everything you said on camera. I say, I'm like, I have it on video. I'm like, I, I, and, and he, his whole attitude changed. He's like, oh yeah? He's like, all right, let's play a game. You show me the video. If you actually have it, I'll let you go. I'm like, it's too late. I already emailed it. Mm-hmm. He thought about it. His whole demeanor changed. <laughs> he thought about it for like 30 seconds and he let me go. That's crazy. Yeah. I, if I didn't think quick like that, I don't know why he didn't take my phone. I don't know what his motive was. But if I didn't think quick like that, I mean, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what would have happened. To That's be crazy. But you want to tell the other one? Cause, so there's not just one cop story. There's two. I'm trying to think of the other one because that was one of them. The other one was when I was, it was with you, your brother, and Chantel. Oh yeah, we had the oh whole crew gosh. with us. But in this one though, I was acting kind of crazy. But I, I, kind of. So do I want to self-incriminate myself here? I don't know. Nah, it's okay because you already beat it up. All right, I beat the case already. So yeah, you um, can tell it. Okay, so yeah. this one, where were we coming from? I don't we were even coming remember. From like Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls ish like somewhere no no they were coming from hamilton my family's house that's what it was okay so we're coming back from hamilton i have family in hamilton ontario so Mm -hmm. it's me trey my sister and my brother we're all driving back because we all live in the same area i don't know it must have been a family barbecue whatever Mm -hmm. we're driving back and if you know the drive from hamilton to toronto it's about two hour drive no I think, um, about hour and a half depending on traffic so depends who's driving actually <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah this is where we're going to the story okay <laughs> all right so we're driving back uh was it the honda it was the honda it was the honda it was the honda the honda accord two door and this is before youtube this is not the nissan maximo that's famous in our vlogs <laughs> When we started YouTube, the car the, that wouldn't start, the not this is so before tr- that. The not so trusty car at all. But, <laughs> but this, this Honda car, couldn't go in reverse. This car could not reverse. Oh so we had gosh. to be strategic about how we park with this car. We oh, had to park. that's a story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to bore you guys with that. <clears throat> I, I bet you people are going to say they want to hear that. We drove this car okay. that couldn't reverse. First of all, we months. pretty much got scammed when we bought this car. Yeah. Bless your parents for helping us buy that car. And within a month, the transmission goes, and we had someone just give it like a quick little fix. And a month after that, the, the reverse just stopped working. So we had to park in spots that no one can park in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> and also, um, when we parked on a hill, we. <laughs> so we would we, strategically try to park on a hill. When so we that could, so we could roll backwards. Roll back in neutral. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar car, car. You know, yeah. like it, it, you can expect it to be good. But, but yeah. it looked cool though. It looked it look cool. It looked cool. It looked cool. Okay, okay. Um, anyway, let's get yeah. back on topic. Yeah. Okay, so driving back from Hamilton, Mr. Local here decides to try to get home as fast as we can. I don't know what the rush was. I really don't know. Maybe he was excited. I, ha- I had a need for speed. But he he used to say that he was a stunt driver in his past life. I was. One and of that my past lives, he was. should be casted for Need for Speed. By the way, um, Fast and I mean, Furious. yeah, sorry. Fast yeah. And I used to play Need for Speed. See where I'm going with that? Yeah. So um, if anyone from Fast and the Furious wants to have a new enemy for Vin Diesel. Um, and I could do the fighting scenes too. I could do the action, the drive in. Okay, yeah. this isn't about Trey right now. This all is about right, the story. Right. 
Yeah. Okay, so we're driving back. Trey has a need for speed. And, you know, he just starts, you know, we call it smeagling back in the day. You we used to, he would, you know, swerve here, swerve there, and, you know, get his way around. And, and we it, were getting back pretty fast. Yo, I got to say one thing. Oh, Lord. When we would smeagle really good, we'd be like, yo, I'm a real smeagleist. Remember? You, you, you're, you're, <laughs> oh, that, that guy's a smeagleist. Remember? Oh, my God. <laughs> the lingo was right. so bad back terrible, then. Terrible. Terrible. <clears throat> All right. So. Yeah. Trey is driving like this, driving like this, cutting people off, doing his thing. Was that cutting people off too? All right. I, I was young though. It, like now I got a lot to live for. I calmed down. I mean, I had a lot to live for back then. This is like. This is old. This, this is like 13 years ago. Easily, yeah. I don't even know if Camaro was born yet. No. Okay, back to the story. Yeah. For the last time. All right. So he's driving, driving, driving. I don't even realize how fast he's going, but he was going over 150 miles or kilometers per hour, cousin Kanda, we do kilometers. Mm -hmm. He was going over 150 kilometers and we get pulled over. Because of this law that they had just implemented. I mean, I was going to get pulled can over. I, can I tell the sorry. story? Yeah, you got, because I'm it sorry. was not just implemented. You just okay. want to make it sound all sugary <laughs> and it's not. I, I'm, I'm going to zip it <clears throat> You can, you can <clears throat> finish. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> we get pulled over. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voices. We get pulled over, license and registration, whatever, okay? Everything's valid, but he looks in the car. I'm in the passenger seat, my brother and sister are in the back. He looks in the, who are these people to you? This officer says that. Yeah. And he and responds, he responds, this is my family. Right. E emphatically, this is my family. Yeah. Yeah. This is my family. Yeah. Goes, what do you mean this is your family? This is not your family. Who are these people to you? He, he told me to my face yeah, in he's front like, of this everyone. This is not your family. This is not your family. How disrespectful. Yeah. So he's like, what do you mean? This is my girlfriend and this is her brother and sister. It's my family. And, I, he, and he's it, like, no. He's like, no, it can't be your family. He was like getting upset. Like you've seen him like getting like, you know when they start getting like that cop attitude? Mm -hmm. Started getting that little cop attitude. He's like, he's like, he's like wait here. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm thinking, what's taking so long? Like, he already took the registration and stuff. He came back to ask this question, goes back to the car for like at least, I don't know how long it's been, but we're thinking, okay, it can't be good. Why does a tow truck pull up in front of the car? And he didn't even have the, the decency to come tell us what was going on. No. All of a sudden, we just see the tow truck pull up. Tow truck comes in front of our car. He comes back to the window and says, okay, all of you guys get out. I'm confiscating the car. So I'm like, can he do that? Like, what? And you're like, okay, but what? Like, what's the reason? Like, why are you taking the car? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you were going over 150 miles per hour, so that's considered stunt driving, so the car has to be confiscated. Yeah. And I was like, he's really going to do that right now. Yeah. He didn't even show you the speed thing, nothing. Nah. When he pulls you over, he didn't ask, he didn't say nothing about that. Have you been drinking? Nothing. Nothing. He was very harsh about it. Um, very uncommunicative. For, uh, to be fair, there, there is a law in Ontario. I don't know about the rest of Canada, but there is a law where if you're going more than 50 kilometers over the speed limit, they do have that right to do that. Yeah. It was the way he went about it and the things he was saying. You know, like looking back, should I have been driving that fast? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Would I do that today? No. But it's the way he went about it. And that's not even the, that's not even the worst part. No. You remember the worst part? The oh, the worst let me tell him, tell him, tell him. Okay, it, it so. Got, it got worse than that. It, it got worse after said. that. Yeah, sorry. This story is so old, but one of the staples in our relationship, unfortunately. So after we all get out the car, we're like, okay, well. We're on the highway. We're on the side of the highway, on the shoulder. He goes, okay, he's like ready to leave. So we're like, what? We're like, you're just going to leave us here on the side? This, this cop was ready to leave us on the side of the highway. And we're, where were we? We're like Mississauga. No, yeah, <clears throat> but before. We're, so, you know, like when you're in the outskirts of the town, you're not really in the city yet. Yeah. There's hardly any street lights. There's no gas it's stations. Dark. There's no side roads. It was just highway and that's it. And the man was, he was leaving us there. And your brother, I, I was, at this point, I was so over it. I'm like, if I say anything, I'm going to go to jail because I was, I was heated. I'm going to be honest. I was yeah. super heated. Your brother actually pleaded with him. Your brother's like, yeah. officer, please, like, we got to get home. 
we, we can't, you know, you can't do this to us. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, well, why don't you call the taxi? But I was like, no, like, none of us had any money. Mm-hmm. He's like, can you please just drop us home? Please, officer. Yeah. And I don't know how, with, with him being how hateful he was, I'm surprised he allowed it. Sure enough, though, he let us get in the back of his car, Yeah, truck. my brother sat in the front with him, and then yeah. us three were in the back. And I was, was just like... That was the most awkward Thank drive God ever. that he, my brother thought of that, because you're right, I almost forgot about that. But yeah. it was like, wow, if my brother wasn't calm about it, yeah, we literally would have been... And there's, it's almost Stranded. impossible to cross those highways, because all the cars are going. There's four, there's four of us. Look at, he was back. ready to leave us. Look, I couldn't believe it. But looking back, how, like, okay, I know how terrible heartless things happen are you? all the time, but how can you even think of leaving someone? And we were still kids at that point. Yeah, we were like adults, technically, but we were like literally. 20, 20 or 21 You know or what something. I mean? We're still kids. And how, you're just going to leave us on the side of the highway? Like, that was what he was about to do. That's crazy. It is crazy. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so definitely, that's not even all the stories, y'all. Like, there's been... Tons of little ones that aren't even worth going into detail. Uh, you know, we we felt a lot of hate towards us, but in many ways, in many ways, I, I would mention something else, but right. I'm gonna keep it cute. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you want to, but you're not going to. Yeah. Why? Huh. I mean, you don't. Yeah. If you don't want it, you don't have to. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what I'm saying. I have no idea. That's what I'm like. Okay. Why? Okay. Huh. You don't have to. Sir, some stones are better left. On what's the saying go? Un- unturned. Unturned. Unturned, and it's true because that's life. Sometimes you get over something. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna, I don't even I'm know gonna, what gonna you're say this. About, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say this. Yeah. I'm gonna say this. As intellectual as I am, I'm, I'm, I, I personally think that I'm very smart in my own way. Of course, everybody of course does. You're super smart. I'm gonna say this, and this is coming from me. I didn't hear this from from anywhere. Mm-hmm. I personally feel like no matter no matter what, no matter how far we go personally, no matter what we decide to do, no matter what ventures we do, we're never fully going to have the support and the the push and the encouragement as a couple. Mm-hmm. And even now individually because people will discover that we're together, mm-hmm. we'll never have that full push and that full support solely based off of the fact that we're together based if, on the fact that we're interracial yes yeah. if if we were both white we would have a certain push mm-hmm. a certain audience a certain community behind us mm-hmm. if we were both black we mm-hmm. would both have a certain push a certain community behind us yeah but because we're interracial we'll never fully have the support of the black community nor will we fully have the support of the white community and whoever's in between that's cool with it that's the support that we get and of course we're grateful for whatever support we get Mm -hmm. you know what i mean whoever supports us and 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 you know um messes with us a long way we definitely genuinely appreciate y'all but just to know that and to know the type of hurdles that we've 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 had to overcome yeah for our relationship and for our careers and for business wise it's evident you know what okay. I mean? There's no, there's no other explanation. I've done my own analysis. Yeah. You, <laughs> and you, you um, in your thoughts a lot. Yeah, that's analyzing. the best way to explain it because, you know, there's, it's always going to be a little different for someone else to see, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing that we, that we try to change now is that it's not about... It's, there's always going to be tension when it comes to race. You know what I mean? Like, we can't erase history. We can't erase what happened. Mm-hmm. But based off of our experience and how how we were raised and how we were brought up, we're trying to change that in, in some type of way for the future. Right. Because statistically, going forward, the world is going to look a lot more like our kids. Well, that, That's kind of where I was going to go with, with my response to what you're saying as well. It's like, I hear you 100%. And I think... I think the the sometimes lack of of being fully pushed in our in our business ventures, our YouTube career, we don't. I, I know what you mean. We don't really get the backing, but I feel it's more so that they don't back us more so on a corporate level. And I know what you mean about having not one community behind us. But hear me out though, because I, I hear you. Not, you know, maybe we don't get the full black support or the full white support as if we were all white couple or all black couple. I I hear you. Yeah. But I think now the interracial community is becoming bigger and bigger. 
and, and especially and in leading into what you were saying, what what's the average person going to look like 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now? The more interracial relationships that happen across the world is shaping the future. So I kind of feel like we can be one of the f- faces as a family of that community. And, and collectively, I mean, I'm not saying like us just being an interracial couple is the answer, but I will say, and I agree with you, I know this is where you're going with it. Yeah. I feel like it definitely shows people that love can exist no matter what. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like we embody that just by being together. And so I feel like I hear you and I agree with you. I feel like corporate sometimes, you know, we don't get the full backing because of that. Not um, only corporate though, community wise. Community wise, too. I agree. Right? Because is there a community for that? You well, know that's what, what I'm mean? saying. The interracial couple or interracial family community is a thing now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It may be like 30 years ago, it wasn't. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just looking at maybe more so the other side of it. It's like I'm agreeing with you. But at the same time, looking at the other side, like maybe it's an opportunity for us to really be the face of the interracial community. Mm, you know what I mean? I don't know if I want to be the face, but <laughs> I'll definitely support it. Yeah. And also, like, I love to see, like, like last time we went to Cabo, we seemed like an older couple. They had to be maybe in their 60s or 50s. I don't know. But mm-hmm. it was an old little interracial couple. And I was like, yeah, they're really out here. Like, that's so cute. Like, that's going to be us in, like, yeah. 30 years. <laughs> but... It definitely, obviously, it exists. Obviously, it's out there. And, you know, sometimes there's, like, negative stigma around it. Like, oh, like... Anyways, I've seen stupid comments. Obviously, there's always going to be stupid comments. People are always going to have some dumb shit to say. But I just feel like... Especially in the comments. Yeah, like, once you once you get past your, like, the small thinking type thing, it's just... Mm-hmm. Once you get past this, and you have love in your heart, and you have good intentions... That's what you go off of, right? Yeah. So um, what, one of the one of the questions that I saw under our comment section was about um, cultural differences, mm-hmm. and of course, there's going to be cultural differences. Um, I don't know if there's any I could think of off the top of my head, but obviously, we look different. Like that's that's an obvious one. I think I think we didn't really have too much of that because we were both like growing up, like we we, we were when we met. And the next 15 years of our lives or 14 years, whatever it was, before we moved, we're in the same city and the same culture, same friends. We listened to the same music, ate the same food. Yeah. So it wasn't really this drastic, like, you come back at the, some days to, to, to my area and it's totally different. And then I go back to your area and it's totally different. It wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. We we're both in the same in the environment same, yeah. with the same interests. So we didn't really have those cultural different experiences. Yeah, you know like, I, mean? it, I can't it wasn't really like think of anything us. except for you really loved ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> I still love ketchup and my kids love ketchup. If you don't like ketchup, there's something wrong with you. You really love ketchup. I feel like we might have to end this episode because that first interruption is going to be the first of many. That, mm-hmm. That's the start of the end for today's episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like it was a great talk. Let us know in the comments um, other things if you want us to expand on anything or other topics I want us to talk about. Episode 4 is in the books. Episode 4 is in the books. You guys comment down below any other things you guys um, want to know. We'll try to respond to some comments this time around. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Unless Keisha loses her voice again. No, I'm not going to lose my voice again. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we out, y'all. All All right, peace. If you're not attracting that, that opportunity is going to come. It'll still come, but you're not going to see it. You're going to miss it. Part of of that whole opportunity is... is Being aware. Being aware and every day looking for it. We, We find what we look for, right? In life, 